everybody welcome to episode three of what we talking about where the question is what are we talking about and today we got a little a little bit of a thick ass episode along with some with some guests i got three animals in here with me right now i got my dog link and two kitties i got miss andromeda And dark, they are both very eccentric cats, and to capture them will require a level of tenacity that's just not within me right now. But <laughs> never mind all of that. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. On today's episode, we're going over the last decade of things, and the main reason why I'm doing this is because next Saturday is my birthday. So, the initial format for this show was going to be every week, but I think I'm going to hold it back to twice a month. So, that way, I'm going to do one, like now, and then another one in 15 days, maybe less. So, it's going to be more or less based off of how much information I learn within episodes, if that makes sense. But enough spending time on that. Um, I just had some thoughts and things I wanted to get off of my chest about the past 10 years of gaming and music. And um, yeah, pretty much just quickly compiled the list. These niggas are playing. Don't, don't worry about that. But yeah, I compiled a list. And both of these lists are... Pulled straight from just memory. I didn't think like too super hard about it. I was just like off the cuff. Ten games past ten years that really affect where I'm kind of at for gaming. So we're gonna go ahead and get on to the top ten games of the past ten years for Gen World. So we're gonna start at number ten and work our way up. Um, now from ten. In between up to one, there's no exact order except for number 10 and number one. I know my definitive, those two. The ones in between, I'm just going to be picking them from the list and more or less just talking about these 10 games. But um, yeah, first one, number 10, we're going with Boneworks. This is for the Oculus Rift system. I own the Oculus Quest. Um, I will use this time to speak about this beautiful thing. Now, on the video version of this podcast, I will be able to show you the headsets and controllers and how I have it set up in here. But this is the Oculus Quest. And it's really awesome. I got a custom cushion faceplate in here right now and I recently just got contact so I was going to get to have these caps that you can just pop off the lenses here and you can get prescription contact lenses for this and I was going to do that but I just decided to get contacts because it's a lot more comfortable to use without glasses so if you're thinking about hopping into the VR train um, the just a normal VR side of things to get deeper into the advancements that's been made since 2000, I think the original came out 14, 2014. It used to feel like it was a ride. It used to, like, you could feel, the, sense the depth that was there, but I still wasn't immersed, if that makes sense. It was always just like, oh, this is a fun experience. This right here, the Oculus Quest has made me fully realize what the next level of gaming and just overall application use for human beings. This is an advancement that you, I cannot put it to words. Honestly, it's something that you really got to experience. And 
it's really interesting to see games like Angry Birds that initially started on a 2D plane, but now they have a version that was developed. Same developers, Rovio. These guys just developed a version in VR to where you have full 3D space. You can teleport around the constructs and use a slingshot to try to get better vantage points to knock out the pigs. And it's just interesting to see that unfold. And um, Boneworks, and the reason why this hit number 10 is one of the most immersive games period that I have probably played in this entire generation when it just comes to full blown immersion into a world you've never been, this is a brand new IP now it takes elements from Half Life um, comedy style from Portal, it feels like a Valve universe but this game is can't think of the guy's name um, that developed this the, the development team I'll, I'll probably just edit it in here but they they done a phenomenal job with using the six degrees of movement that you have with the quest and then you have the valve index headset which is the high end because the quest is pretty much mid low range it's more based off if you have a good computer to run it because it has its own operating system and the Valve Index requires you to have a good computer. This one flip flops back and, and forth. So you they got games that are actually ported to APK files for Android that can run on the headset by itself. But then you got the Oculus Link, which can run actual like VR games, full PC VR games on the headset native with no kind of hitches. Now, like I said, it's reliant on your build. So when I speak of all performance things, I will be speaking of my configuration for my computer. So don't take my performance for you're going to get the same performance on your machine. Everyone's machine is different. I pray you got a good machine though. And if not, we can figure out a way to get you a good machine. Me, the Lord, Ricky Smiley. Hopefully we can, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But Yes, Boneworks, that is my number 10, and enough on VR. I will be making a separate long-form video talking about this and showing off footage in a more focused manner, just to have more time to talk about it. There's a lot there, and I haven't really been, I've just been posting gameplay here and there about it. It's, VR is crazy. But, um, moving from there, I'm going to hop to Nintendo just because these two games kind of like coincide with each other and that's Breath of the Wild for my number 9 and Odyssey for number 8 and the Super Mario Odyssey and both of these games hundreds of hours in both for entirely different but simil similar reasons it was exploring the new versions of familiar lands because you have Breath of the Wild, which takes place in Hyrule, but completely reimagined. Shit was opened up, and he was like, what kind of physics is this? Man was butt naked with leaves and pot lids and shit. And I'm like, oh, Lord, this, I can just jump up and get the apple? Wait a minute, I ain't got to do none of this in order. So I was like, okay, fuck it that game it was open-ended from the jump and the difficulty spike was reversed when you start the game it's crushing but the more you play it the more easy it got with my original file and i don't want to speak on the emulation side of things that's just dark okay i plead the fifth the damn listen to me sim you emulation um running it with official ROM dumps like legal shit here no no gray there's legal shit going on but running it with an unlocked frame rate and mods just made Breath of the Wild alone one of the best experiences I had this year like period that 
And then shout out to the to the developers of the Simu emulator. If you are not a part of that Patreon, goddamn, hop deep in, please. Do that for us and the, just the beautiful people out there because they are doing some phenomenal work. They just introduced Vulcan API into the emulator with performance boost. It's crazy. Look, Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey. Now this, I have not played any modded version on, but I like speed running the shit out of this damn game. And I haven't done it in the past six months, I think. I think it's been about six or seven months since I last ran it. But still, to this day, I just, to this day, I will run through the just the first like 30 minutes of the game because it is just therapeutic to me. That control, Mario's control has never, listen to me, Mario's control has never felt that damn good. That was butter. And when I mean butter, not, I can't believe it's not butter. I'm talking country crock. Stop playing with me. That shit is nasty. I made a, I made this dumbass series when I used to, um, it wasn't dumb, it was hard. It's called kneecaps. And I would just, when I used to like flex, my my skills when the game first dropped, I was like, watch me pop off this wall and save myself and fake like I'm dying. And then throw the hat out, bounce off it, and then pop off another wall and land back on the platform. Sexy. And then what, I, what did I do, use to do it? I used kneecaps. That's what I did, and it worked. So... Super Mario Odyssey, number eight to seven. I'm gonna swing the Hellblade. Send you a sacrifice. This I ain't even gonna spend long on it because it's not a long game. It's from Ninja Theory, the same guys that did the DMC reboot. I know, I I know, I know. Mm -hmm. That. One. And what what really threw me off was how enjoyable not only the gameplay was, it was very, it was to the point. As soon as it starts, it don't bullshit around. It introduces you to the mechanics, lets you know that, hey, this is how shit works. And then it just begins to tax your ass for like three hours mentally. I don't think I've ever been like purely unadulterated just full-blown psychosis. I played it by myself in the dark with headphones on. These headphones, to be specific, these. I played it with these on, locked in the room, and I ran the game. Didn't it wasn't like a ah, like scary things. I felt like I was crazy, bro. I felt like I felt like my mind was talking to itself. And then my mind and itself was both laughing at me. That's what like it was. It was the craziest thing I ever. That game was the shit. Experience it if you went to the psychological thrillers and horror with a little bit of with a lot of bit of action and a lot of bit of violence. Yes, it's freaky. The game's rated mature. You got to be 17 and up to enjoy the shit in the United States of America. Number six, six, we're on six. Number six, I'm going with Dying Light. Dying Light, that's another game that really showed off how just making mechanics right and make parts of the game just connect together seamlessly. Just an attention to detail. The game is a first person zombie survival, horror survival game. And the main draw of the game is that you get to customize your weapons to 
all kinds of just horrifying degrees. And by horrifying, I mean two levels to like you can have a dagger with poison on the tip and then if you hit them the crit might create an electrical shock that might stun nearby enemies then you can run and slide knock them to the ground jump in the air and drop kick everybody that's in the surrounding area all of this happening within a 10 second span if you know what you're doing the game gives you a grappling hook that allows you to scale buildings. Zombies after you. Ah, you hitting it. You running. Ah, get off me. Ah, ah. You getting out the way. Bow, you hit the grappling hook. You hit the ground. Let's say you got a 9mm on you. You ain't got a lot of ammo, so using a gun normally ain't, ain't gonna help you. So you say, you know what? Mama ain't raised no bitch. You holster that bitch, pull out the electric axe, and then you just go and do work from there. You already filled out your I-9. So just go to work. That's it. Just go to show up for the shift. Just show up for the shift. And that's that game, the soundtrack was awesome. That those graphics were nasty. And when I played it initially, I had a GTX 750 Ti and an i7 third generation. Eight gigabytes of RAM. Ran like butter on that bitch. Smooth 45 frames per second on 1080p. <laughs> it was a good ass game though. But, okay. So that was six. I'm gonna go to five. We go an owl boy. Owl, oh, Owl Boy. What's really cool about Owl Boy is it 100% should have been a Super Nintendo game. I would love to see this like actually on the cart. Now, the way the controls are set up it is not possible because you need the right stick. You got to have the right stick do the thing in order to aim. And so the control scheme is not made for a Super Nintendo controller. But it fits in. Maybe I'll even give it to Sega Saturn just because for 2D graphics, it would exist better. 32-bit, that's what I'll say. Sega Saturn, that's where it should be. But the game is so good. The soundtrack, the story, that writing was actually really good. And it's not voiced. It's all just old school bleeps and bloops. But the animations of the characters. And I did a deep and in-depth review of the game. I'll link that everywhere. Because I can. It's on Twitch. I just uploaded it to Twitch. The volume's kind of wonky on it because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, yeah. And I don't have the files no more. So I'm not going to remix the bitch down. I, don't, I ain't got nothing else for you. But it's there. Those that My thoughts are still valid on that game. I love it. So that was, what, five? Let me count these out. So I got ten. Yeah, so we got four. All right. I'm going Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is my number four. Oh, Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight. Shouts out to Yacht Club Games. Me and my boy Akeem did a stream and we raced Shovel Knight. I don't think I was able to catch the vibe before. I gotta go check on the old page and see if it was there. Gaming Real. And the developers actually like shout us out and shared the stream and shit. And it was crazy. I was just like, damn, the developers fucking with it. Now they indie, indie developers, so it's like they they just regular people. But it's just cool to see people who are interested in the medium, but fucking with us who just enjoy enjoying their work and recognizing us for just chilling and enjoying their, their, their shit. It's like a vicious circle of love. You showing me love for showing you love? How dare you? <laughs> well, what's really cool is... 
That game got one of the hardest soundtracks. Now, I know you, you continuously hear me say the soundtracks for a lot of these. Music plays such a huge... At, let me get closer to the mic. Music plays such a huge role in in game and in, in, in entertainment mediums because music makes you lose control. Sierra. <laughs> what was really crazy is Shovel Knight is my number four. I love that game. Um, the fire level, I can't think of the name of the level. God damn it. But I have the soundtracks on, on Bandcamp. I bought them both. Bought all of them. Because you got the... Okay, hold on. Let me go into deeper detail with this. I was going to cancel it, but fuck it. Let's run it back. We're going to run it back. Shovel Knight has multiple expansions that came in the packs of new playable characters with new stories. So each of the knights, Plague Knight, King Knight, why am I acting like I can't pull this up? All of the knights have their own story you can play through. And they created the treasure trove to house all of the DLCs together. And one of my favorite things is they got this new other game they created called Shovel Knight Showdown. And it's like a Smash Brothers style fighting game like Smash Brothers. Because obviously I said Smash style. Don't listen to me. The Smash style gameplay fits perfectly with this because there's so many characters that you can play as, including just like the boss characters that weren't playable, just the side characters you meet that wanted to throw hands and you, you beat his ass in the field. You had to do the down bounce on him, the down thrust from Zelda 2 and fucking um, DuckTales. Yeah. And it was effective as fuck. He was bouncing and holding down and hold, jumping and holding down and cracking skulls with ruthless intent. Ruthless intent. Number three. Titanfall 2 and Apex Legends are both my number, my, my, my number three. And the reason why they are both my number three is the simple fact that Titanfall 2 is the best first person shooter of this generation and Apex Legends has some of the best characters in a game this generation. Tell me I'm lying. Miguel aka Mirage is the funniest character in any game this year. Original character at that. And the fact that it exists in the Titanfall 2 universe alone. <sighs> say less. And the gameplay. Smooth, sweet, buttery. If I'm correct, this game was built off the Source engine. I don't know how. It's like a modified Unreal 3 engine or something shit. And it's the same team that made Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare 2. AKA to stop playing with me, boys. So you know as soon as they got behind the wheel, EA just slid them the check and just said, hey, make a banger. And they made the banger. And you know what EA did? They said, when we want to, and dropped it in between the time Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, and Battlefield 1 came out. And then that year, everybody was like, nah, fuck that, that Call of Duty, that one actually looked trash. But Battlefield 1 was hard. 
Titanfall 2 sitting here looking like I'm alive. <laughs> but man, it's still alive though. It kind of got a resurgence. And the reason why I put Apex Legends with this is because when Apex Legends dropped, it kind of revived the online community for Titanfall 2. And then just I think for this month, PlayStation Plus gave Titanfall 2 for free. Boom. 80,000 niggas. In a week. Because now people are realizing the game was dope. Or I could just be overreacting this entire time and be all like, this game is just dope when it's all right. I love Titanfall 2. I believe it's the finest first person shooter of this generation, of its caliber. Because number two is Doom 2016. And the reason why I'm giving it to Doom, the main reason, not even the main reason, but the main reason. The fact that you got to get health by using melee attacks. The fact you got to get up close. The, that, that is one of the hardest game design choices just to force you to run up on the demon. You can't stay away from them. You gonna die. So you gotta sit down and actually strategize within seconds, especially on the Ultra Nightmare difficulty. You you can't plan. You just gotta run up, shoot, blast, grab, rip, and take. You gotta do this shit manually. That game is incredible. And they delayed Eternal, and it's cool because Shigeru Miyamoto, and I don't remember if it was him. I hope it was Shigeru. But the main thing is a rush game to release will be trash, but a delayed game will be good nigga and I'm probably getting the quote fucked up I might be and that's cool if I am God knows what's in my heart I, did, I am sorry if I fucked that quote up I'm not gonna look it up while I'm recording the podcast even though I could cause it's my podcast I really could couldn't I but anyway Doom 2016 Rockin' soundtrack, even though I don't like rock like that. Rock ain't never been my shit. And even though rock ain't bad, I'm not saying rock is trash. Just like I don't listen to goddamn country music. I just don't listen to rock. But that soundtrack is hard. Number one. Near Automata. 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 Auto Mata. Near. This might be the most significant game to come out these past 10 years. This is a fucking fine example of how to blend genres. The core gameplay of combat was developed by Platinum. Everything else was done by Square and their team. And Yoko Taro. Was crazy ass. I'm not going to spoil a damn thing to anyone that has not played the game that is listening to this podcast. Just because this game is structured so odd. When I first played it, I almost quit. But once again, mama didn't raise no bitch. She didn't. She did not. Nope. So I pressed on and figured out that you just got to get past the tutorial section and then you can save. Once you save, the game opens up and then you realize that this ain't no small structured story this game is it expands and unfolds and twists and 
You play as different characters all around you, un unlocking these chips to give yourself abilities like Bayonetta to where you can just dodge at the right second, bow, slow down time for a minute, and land that shit right in somebody's neck. Oh, what's that shit? Weapons. You got weapon, unlockable weapons out the ass. And then you got sentry bots that you can customize to the D-pad so you can just bow, pop left or right and switch between a sentry gun. One of them got a hammer. The other one can conjure like arrows and shit to come out the ground. The other one can just straight shoot it like a, a, a full screen Shin Hadouken at an enemy. And if you hold the button down with that nigga activated, he charges lasers and shoots three of them bitches. Consecutively at your target, and if you're playing a hard mode, you can't lock on nothing. Free aim. You gotta land the hit with your wrist and pray that you don't miss. That's all you got. But that's my my list. Um, oh. My favorite song from Near Automata, Fortress of Lies, the bunker theme. I don't care if anyone think that shit creepy. That song hard and that melody cleanses my colon. I don't care if it's nasty. <laughs> and I'm gonna do this next. My my next focus topic is we're going to switch to music since I continuously keep talking about soundtracks. So we got 10 albums we're going to talk about here. And just like I did it with the game list, all of this is off the cuff. I ain't prepared to talk about this. I just had to think for a minute and now I'm going to think in between each answer as to why I picked these motherfuckers. So here we go. Top 10 albums of the past decade. We starting at 10. And this one is way more structured. I actually went into my reasoning for why each one of these are picked. Number 10. Gen World, Angel Island 3. The reason why I feel like um, this nigga constructed... A moment in time in audio format like that with nothing but memories and moments in time wrapped in sonic flavoring it's, it's it is a project I'll leave that link in. I'm leaving a, a link to all of the albums that I know I won't get copyright striked for and, and, and stuff like that. Y'all will get those links. I'm scrubbing everything. But number 10, Angel Island 3. Number 9, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, Kanye. This dropped at the height of this decade, accrued 10 years ago. Now it's been more than 10 years ago. But the album, when I heard, not Devil in the in the, dre, in the Red Dress, so appalled it still to this day gets spins. That song, it don't it has no reason to be as hard as it is. But there's obvious issues with it. Like you can hear in RZA's voice it like it cuts off. One hand? No, no, that wasn't Rizzo, was it? That was, um... Goddamn. With, uh, God damn it. I can't think of his fucking name. I lost his name, everybody. It's cool. Ain't nobody gonna hate me for Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats. God damn it. But yeah, him. 
when he was on the hook of that, and then his voice cut out, and then RZA's just full audio quality was completely different from everybody else. You could tell he recorded that like on his phone and sent that in. Made it work though. The homie made it work. Just like always, he's gonna make it work. Mm. Number eight. I believe it, it stands for what will crack do, but Griselda. What will crack do? Um, the simple fact that we haven't heard rap like this since 50, probably. Early 2000. And this shit just, bro. Griselda in general. Benny the Butcher in general. Conway the Machine in general. West Side Gun in general. Are hard. All three of them boys are they are they lyricists. They are you know you know how we got word smiths. They are word marksmen. Every time I listen to them, I feel like my grandmother just got robbed. Somebody robbing robbing somebody I love. Every time I listen to that shit. And I hate it, but they that just that's how good they are. What would crack do? That I think is what would crack do, because that's what they talk about moving. And yes, Griselda. Number seven, Heroes by Daylight and his homie. I don't remember his name. Let me get the boy's name. I should have did. Should have wrote it down. I think it was the Ichiban Don. Daylight and the Itchy Bond Don. It's one of those projects to where if you know about it, you know about it. But if you know who Daylight is, this is him when he's actually like doing truly dope shit. And this album is one of my favorites from the past 10 years. And I will probably continue to have this on spins permanently. Number six, The Homie. The homie. I can't even begin to put the words this album because this man's words does it for it, itself. This man said, I'll thumb wrestle an ambidextrous octopus. Cambada, Smoke and Mirrors, DMT, Divin Definitive Meta God Trilogy, DMT, Smoke and Mirrors. Number five, Tenkaichi 3 by that nigga Sage, the 64th, Seji Bot, the homie. For two songs specifically because they these songs are pretty much are just ingrained into a nigga DNA at this point no homo dragon of the somersault cloud motherfucking Majin Fu I actually snagged you the, the original bro. I got the instrumental I used that to sharpen my skills on Wednesday. When I tell you that this, I, I just put it on. I got the MP3. That's another thing too. Hold on to your MP3. Why y'all niggas keep upgrading? Why Apple removing ports? Why are they removing Sage? Why are they removing ports? Please tell me. Besides all of that, this is one of the most important albums to me personally that have come out. It has, it honestly changed things. It caused waves. 
it brought an entire new sound from somebody I now can call a friend. This shit is hard. Tenkaichi 3, Sage the 64. Number 4. Number four, number four, number four. Tron Legacy soundtrack. The Fall. Oh, Lord, The Fall. The beat on The Fall. The beat on Rensler. The beat at the end of Lion Club. The beat of de rest. Say less. Tron Legacy, Daft Punk. Number four. Number three. Ludicrous, Ludiversal. This album, I don't see anyone ever talking about. And it's interesting. Because this nigga Luda was actually rapping on it. Hard. I personally thought impressive. Now I know people ain't looking for Ludacris no more. He a legend. We know how these things goes. He a movie star now. Shit's different. This album perfectly encapsulated this man where he at in his life. And it was leagues better than the goddamn Battle of the Sexes album. That album was trash. Trash. Ludiversal. Hard. God body. And this is my number three. It's significant. This has been my world with the Michael Jackson sample on the outro. You weren't outside. You weren't there. That shit was beautiful. He had Mike coming in with the high pitch. It was crazy. That album was hard. Number two, Near Automata soundtrack. Number two. What? Near Automata soundtrack. I can't even give you the composer's name. I'm a piece of shit. I don't know why I did not go and get this this man's name. But it's cool though because the game itself knows Keiichi Okabe. I'm probably pronouncing that all wrong. So I'm going to put the name actually on the screen so you can actually see it down here in the bottom. AJ Okabe. Bow. There it is. That's his name. Near Automata. Number two. Number one. Lupe Fiasco. Tetsuo and Youth. And Drogos Wave. I dare you to say or do something about it. That's what I thought. Specifically Drogas Ways. But Tetsuo and Youth has one of the most flawless start to finish playthroughs I've had the entire year. Just listening to that entire album was such a therapeutic, just chill experience. It made no sense for it to be that beautiful. It reminded me of, of playing Okami, honestly. It was beautiful. Drogas Wave. There was a lot of truth in that. A lot of fantasy, but a lot of truth. And I think the main thing I got from Drogas Wave was to just be happy. That you have a chance to live in the moment. Because damn. 
be able to win it and get snatched up out of him. That album really solidified Lupe as exactly who the fuck I thought he was. Because it was one of them things to where you can hear stories, but it's just like there's enough of that. It's like you got to know within when you hearing something because music is vibrations, it's frequencies. You can feel the shit. I'm sitting there listening to music. Something was wrong on lasers. Something was wrong on 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 um, food and liquor too. Something was wrong that entire time. In Tetsuo and youth, still felt like something was wrong. But now it was like the release of that negativity completely. Then he did Drogos Light, which to me was asshole. But that's my homie, so I really don't like Drogos Light at all. Drogos Waves. Oh, Drogos Waves is so hard. There's not a bad beat on the entire project. Even the electronic dance track is hard. How you have a hard dance, dance, a, a, a electronic dance song? And then name it XO for hugs and kisses. Lupe is the god, that's the goat, that's the sensei. That's the homie, he a friend of the people. Stop playing with me. I got one more list and I'm getting out of here. Top five games of 2019 in general. We, we, we lessening the scope. We bringing it in more focus real quick. Because I just got top five. I'm just going to throw them out. They ain't in no order. This is the top five of 2019. I'm not talking about no trash games and nothing trash. I'm not saying what I thought was trash because... I enjoyed a lot of shit this year. Fuck that. Top 5 of 2019. Control. Remedy. I'm not... I ain't touched the DLC. Core game only. Pre-patched. Borderline glitchy. Funner than a motherfucker. Control is so much fun. Especially when you get the powers unlocked. You level up slightly. You're about 10 hours in the game. You can float now. And you can aim at the same time. The building starts shifting around you. You found some secret bosses. Control is hard. Death Stranding. My entire thing for Death Stranding. In the video version, I'm going to be showing something that... My roommate gifted me for the physical copy of the game. It came with the soundtrack, and the soundtrack is called Time Falls. Pretty lit. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. But I think one thing that's really cool is the simple fact that the game itself tells its narrative. so deeply intertwined with the gameplay. I have never seen a game that where you can't put words to explain. Like, you could tell somebody what the gameplay is, and they're going to think it's crazy. But then when you play it, it's like, hold on, bro. They, these are mechanics. Like, there's 20, 30 different things going on at once just for one delivery. Because you got not only humans on your ass, you got the ghost of Christmas ass on your ass. And then you still got to make the delivery. And let's not talk about the weather. Let's talk about the earth. You might need rope, ladder, bridge, bike, boat. You ain't got boats. I don't think you can get boats. I ain't, I ain't seen boats yet. But you got to find a way to deal with all of that. And then you still 
trying to unite the United States of America. One man making it happen, though. Death Stranding. It's crazy. Boneworks, once again. This game, it made both lists. Boneworks is hard, bro. But with VR, it's, it's going to be impossible for me to relay how great of a game it is. So I'll just, I'll describe a scenario. And in the video version, I'll probably try to chop in some, um, I'll put some gameplay right here. Bow, you drop in. You see lockers right in front of you. You look down. Controllers in your hand. You're able to see your hands real time. So you're just flipping them around. Bow. You got your hands connected to your elbow all the way up. You got full arms in the game. Check your inventory. All you got is ammo and nothing else. So you walk forward. I got smooth motion turned on. I don't get motion sickness. So I turned all that safety bullshit off full speed um, running full locomotion use the right stick to look around all of that shit but I'm able to use the headset to look around at the same time too so I'm able to walk up to the lockers both controllers in hand a nigga reach out and grab the door swing that bitch open see a crowbar grab that bitch Examine it, put it in the backpack. Turn left, there's a door there. Hold my hand up, bow. We're going through the door. Soon as I open the door, goon. Pull out the crowbar. Man walking up to me screaming, grab his head, hold his head steady, and beep. Sleep. Ice. Just like that. And every detail I described was not made with the press of a button. You perform these actions just like opening a door, grabbing the actual weapon and putting it in your inventory. Holding an enemy back while you ready another strike with your other hand. And landing said strike and watching that nigga pass out. Bone works. Fuego. Fucking Fuego. That game. Stress level zero. That's the developer's name. Stress level zero. Them. All that. Devil May Cry 5. Resident Evil engine. Along with Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2. I'm just adding that in right now. Oh, Lord. They already announced they're doing Resident Evil 3 remake coming next year. What's so cool about the, the RE engine is its scalability and the fact that it's already optimized out the box. Resident Evil 2 ran into smooth 90 frames. On 1440p on a 1050 Ti. I'm just joking. It wasn't that good. It was uh, it was a 1060, and I had it running at 1440, and everything was on high medium, and I was getting 90 frames per second. i7, by the way, eighth generation at this point. The game runs fantastic. Doesn't dip below 60, 70. It's nasty. Devil May Cry 5 performs even better. And that's why I actually put Devil May Cry 5 on the list. Because that game is perfect. Now, there is a multiplayer component that was modded in to actually give full-blown co-op gameplay. But when it comes to the setup from level to level action, unlocking Dante, unlocking Dante's weapon, unlocking the Blood Palace... 
going deeper into the gameplay and figuring out switch ups with the combos and the endless combos you can pull off. <sighs> Devil May Cry 5. And then on the flip side of that, Devil May Cry's um, cousin developer, Platinum, Astral Chain. Astral Chain getting a nod. Astral Chain is getting the nod. That's one of the best games to come out this year. And it was only, it's exclusive on the Switch. Don't think it's actually coming to anything else. It'll be cool to see it come to PC. Just because I would like the resolution to be better. So I can just see things better. Um, it's locked at 30. And the game kind of suffers for that. But it's developed so good. A nigga don't care. But having the ability to play it in 60 frames would it'll, it'll be the breath of the wild treatment make it probably one of the best games to, to come out of the generation type shit because Bayonetta 2 which I'm I actually criminally did leave it off of the list but Bayonetta 2 is honorable mention Bayonetta 2 Bayonetta 2 is one of the greatest action games put to code period that game is sauce level. If we want to sauce talk, that game's sauce level. Stop playing with me. That's it. I ain't got nothing else. So, that's been what we talked about. We went over how this decade has looked in gaming and music to my ass. Which is very, very unimportant. But my perspective is now on the internet. <laughs> y'all have a good ass week. I'll see y'all later. Now have a Merry Christmas. And wish me a happy birthday in the week. <laughs> <laughs>